didn't work. Hold on. There we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Kids Farm Preschool. My name is Mrs. Jennings, and I am your teacher for this class. I can't wait to learn with you today. Today, we are learning, or sorry, today is ELA Day, and we will be reading a book about mammals. This is the book that I'm going to read to you. I got it from the library. I'm very excited. I already peeked inside. Um, the thing about this book is it does have a lot of words, so I'm, I'm probably only going to, I'm either going to paraphrase or I'm only going to read a few pages. That way we have enough time <clears throat> to get to the actual lesson, which I will have to go back and forth between screens again because I forgot to print it out. In the meantime, um, my board over here is blank, so I'm just going to stay over here. Okay, oh, I'm missing out a little bit that we can see everything. Why am I crooked? I don't know why I'm crooked. Sorry, guys. If any of you are anal about that kind of detail, I am, but um, I can't even, I can barely see myself. <laughs> okay, anyway, <laughs> anyways. Let's sing our welcome song. I, I don't like this, but I'll, I'll fix it another time. Welcome, welcome everyone. Now we're here, let's have some fun. First we clap our hands like so. Then we reach and touch our nose. Welcome, welcome everyone. Now we're here, let's have some fun. And any of you that have seen my other videos, you know I was trying to figure out how to incorporate kids' names into that. So I think I figured out. It would go something like this. Welcome, welcome, my friend Seth, my friend Adeline, my friend Adrian. Now we're here, let's, now you're here, let's have some fun. So I figured that out. So if anyone starts coming consistently, I will shout out your name if you want me to. Okay, now that we sang our day, our welcome song, let's talk about what day it is. Today is, it's not Friday. That's not correct. Today is Monday. It's the first day of the week. Oh, my cord is blocking my notes. Just give me a second. You'd think I'd have this down pat by now, but for some reason I can't remember it day to day. Okay. <clears throat> Is the first day of the week. Yesterday was Sunday. Sunday's on the weekend. Woo woo, weekend. Anybody do anything fun over the weekend? Let me know in the comments below. Tomorrow will be Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh -huh. Let's sing our Days of the Week song. Remember, it goes to the tune of the Adams Family intro. Get your snapping fingers ready. Days of the Week. Days of the Week. Days of the week, 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 days of the week. There's Sunday and there's Monday, there's Tuesday and there's Wednesday, there's Thursday and there's Friday, and then there's Saturday, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. Days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. There's Sunday and there's Monday, there's Tuesday and there's Wednesday, there's Thursday and there's Friday, and then there's Saturday. Days of the week, 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 days of the week. Days of the week, days of the week. Now, we, now that we know what day of the week it is, let's talk about the month of the year. This month is still January, but we're almost there to February, so hold on tight. In January, we, ce we celebrate New Year's. Last month was December, when we celebrate Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa. And next month, on Wednesday, it'll be February, and February, we felt, let me try that one again. In February, we celebrate Valentine's Day, yay, it's Valentine's Day. Um, holidays, celebrate holidays. 
Let's sing the months of the year song. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. These are the months of the year. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. These are the months of the year. Okay, remember there are 12 months of the year. The next thing we need to know is what day of the month it is. Now most months have 30 or 31 days. January does have 31 days. Today is the 30th day of the month. Let, oh, so that's why I have the star on the 30. Let's count together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. 29, 30, 30 days so far. Now the last thing we need to know, as always, is what year it is. This year is 2023. Last year was 2022, and next year will be 2024. Now we have everything we need to know to figure out what day it is. Today's date is Monday, January 30th, 2023. Do you guys know what season it is? Do you remember? That's right, it's still winter. It's a still usually the coldest season and the coldest time of the year. Usually the temperatures go way down low no matter what. Even if you live in a hot place, usually in winter it's the coldest time of the year. So even if your coldest time of the year is 50 degrees, it's still the coldest. A lot of places get really cold, like below freezing cold. I'm glad I don't live there. I am a big old baby when it comes to cold. I like to be warm. The only time I like it to be cold is when it gives me, if, if it's just cold enough barely, that it gives me an excuse to bundle up and to cuddle and have warm drinks and sit by a fire. That's it. Any colder, I'm out. Okay, last season was fall or autumn. That's when all the leaves fall off the trees. We pick pumpkins. We have a lot of holidays. And next month, or sorry, next season will be spring, where we can celebrate Easter, St. Patrick's Day, Mother's Day, all that good stuff. I think Mother's Day. I'll double check on them. Okay, and let's talk about, we talked about the season. Oh, I forgot to ask, if anybody has a birthday today specifically, or this month, let me know in the comments and I'll wish you happy birthday. Okay, so the next season, the last, okay, now we can go into the weather. I'm kind of excited, guys, because so far, every day has been mild or a little bit cold that I've shown you. But today is mild and rainy. And now, for the first time, I get to dress Mr. Barra in his rain outfit. No boots, no, no Ugg boots for you, mister. You better grab that umbrella, get a rain jacket, and get some rubber boots on. Okay, now I have a question for you guys. Do you guys like going out to play in the rain and splashing puddles and everything? Or do you like to stay inside and play board games or read a book or watch TV? Let me know. I like doing both. It kind of, for me, still depends on how, what the temperature is. If it's rainy and warm, I'll go outside, I'll play, I'll splash in the puddles. I'm all for it. If it's cold, I'm staying inside. I'm getting some tea, and I am finding a good book. Okay, I'm very excited. Okay, let me, give me a second. I'm going to find my lesson. Like I said, I didn't, I didn't pull it up because I thought I was just going to read my book, but I want, I actually do want to 
tell you the notes that I um, have for today. So give me just one second, guys. Facts versus opinions, we already did that. We are looking at, where's unit two? There's unit two. Day one, there we go, okay. Now I can't see myself right now, but I want to read this to you, that what I wrote down. So like I said, we're gonna read the, the mammal book. Um, today we are going to learn about mammals. What is a mammal? And how can you tell apart from other animals? A mammal is a specific type of animal that has fur or hair, makes milk for its babies, gives birth to live babies instead of eggs, and mostly lives on land. They also use lungs to breathe air and are warm-blooded. Some examples of mammals are humans, bears, dogs, cats, and horses. What does it mean to be warm-blooded? Well, warm-blooded means that your body helps to keep you at the right temperature. Cold-blooded means that you need to use the environment around you to keep your body at the right temperature. And when I say body, I mean the inside of your body, not your skin and, and your outside of your body. I mean like your organs and your blood and all of that. Okay, so animals like snakes and lizards can often be found laying on the rocks in the sun to make sure that the inside of their bodies are warm enough. Mammals like humans and bears can regulate their temperature by themselves. Regulate is another word for control. A mammal's body can control their temperature inside of their body. Of course, we still need to take care of the outside of our body by making sure that we don't get too cold or too hot. Let's look at some examples of animals. I was going to put them on the board, but I'll just say them to you and see if we can figure out which ones are mammals and which ones are not mammals. So let's see. What about a duck? A duck breathes air like a mammal, a duck is warm-blooded like an animal, and a duck lives on land most of the time like a mammal. But it lays eggs, which is not like a mammal, so it is not a mammal. Let's see, what about a cat? A cat breathes air like a mammal, it makes milk for its babies like a mammal, and it's warm-blooded. Yes, that's a mammal. What about a fish? Can you guess? I'll give you a second. A fish breathes with gills, not lungs, lays eggs, not live babies, lives in water, and not on land. Definitely not a mammal. What about a pig? Well, a pig has hair, it lives on land, and it breathes with lungs. Yes, that's a mammal. Uh, what about a lizard? A lizard breathes air like a mammal, It does, but it does lay eggs, not live babies and it's cold-blooded, not warm-blooded. No, nope, not a mammal. Last but not least, how about a cow? A cow has fur, it mil makes milk for its babies, and it lives on land. Yes, that's a mammal. Okay, so I, I hope I gave you a good idea of generally what a mammal is. Now I'm going to tilt the camera down a little bit so that I can, oh goodness, oh my goodness, you're going to want to see the book, so I'm going to scoot it in, I think that should be good. Okay, so let's talk about what a book is. I try to do this for, for, oh, blah, I try to do this before every book so that we practice remembering. So here's the front cover, it's got giraffes on it, it has the title on it, and the author on it. Here's the back cover. It has a pair of orangutans, a mommy and a baby. And if we open it up, first we just see a regular blank page, and then we see the title page. Now it looks like on the title page we've got the back end of a mommy lion and a baby lion. It also has the title and the author. Now what are, what are the title and the author? Well the title is the name of the book, and the name of this book is Born in the Wild, Baby Animal Mammals and Their Parents. And the author is the person that wrote the book, Lita Judge. Now let me see real quick. It doesn't say 
who the illustrator is. Now, when it doesn't say the illustrator, you, I normally assume that it's the author. Now, parents, if I'm wrong, please correct me so that I can say that in future videos. Um, okay, so, a baby is born. Now, this page has a baby deer and a mommy deer. Oh, polar bears and giraffes. Polar bear cubs arrive tiny, blind, and nearly hairless. Oh, look, you can see the teeny tiny baby right here and the big old mama. They may grow to weigh over 900 pounds, but at birth, they are no bigger than squirrels. Cubs sleep and stay warm against their mother's fur. In a few months, they will be big enough to explore the world outside their den. Let's see, it says we're at, okay, so we have about 10 more minutes to read this book. And then whatever page I'm on, that's where I'll stop so we can do our deep breathing and stuff. Other babies look like they're like little adults and are ready to run. A giraffe calf is born in open country where lions prowl. After some shaky stumbles, she wobbles to her feet. Within hours, she, need, she may need to sprint from danger. Ba oh, where, there, there we go. Baby is hungry. All mammals begin life nursing on their mother's milk. Grizzly bear cubs nurse for several months before they can start eating grass, berries, insects, and a little meat. But they won't be weaned from their mother's rich milk for two or even three years. Wolf pups grow tiny teeth in their first three weeks. But meat is tough, so pups rely on adults chewing and regurgitating. That means throwing it back up. Within two months, the pups will have adult teeth and they can eat the meat that's brought back from the den. Two-week-old guanaco calf begins to eat a little grass. Over the next few months, she will depend less and less on her mother's milk until she is weaned entirely. These guanacos kind of look like llamas a little bit. Okay, whoops. Okay, so panda picture. I love pandas. Okay, what is your favorite cute little mammal baby? Or adult, let me know in the comments. Pandas are, are way up there. I love pandas. The baby needs protection. Yeah, the baby can't keep itself safe. Mommy needs to help it. Mammals are born small and defenseless. They need to be kept safe from danger. In his first few days, a white-tailed deer fawn is too wobbly and frail to run, so he hides by staying perfectly still. His mother comes back to nurse him occasionally but most of the time he st she stays away so hungry predators don't find him. Oh, here's a panda again. A mother panda protects her cub by cradling him to her chest. For several days after he is born, she won't even put him down to eat or drink. It will be months before he is strong enough to support his own weight. Until then, he depends on his mother to hold him safe. A musk ox calf is strong enough to endure harsh Arctic storms but she is defenseless against hungry wolves. With sharp horns, snorts, and stamps, the entire herd forms a tight protective circle around the little one, guarding against attacks. See, you can see the little one right here, and everyone around is protecting them. Okay, next, the baby needs shelter. Let's see how much, oh, stop talking. We might be able to get through this book. Yay, I'm so excited. I was brave one. I wouldn't have time. Animals need to be protected from rain, wind, and snow, and shaded from hot sun. Young western harvest mice, called pinkies, grow quickly in nests their mothers weave with grass and downy plants. Downy meat means soft and fluffy. Badger cubs, here, stay sheltered with their mother in the burrow she digs underground. A litter of raccoon kits, that's what they call baby raccoons. Uh, shares a crowded home high in a hollow tree. Within weeks, they will grow big enough to begin to explore. Oops. The baby needs to move. These are possums. A newborn mammal might need to keep up with his mother as she reaches for food or flees from danger, or searches for food or flees from danger. Eastern gray kangaroos, right here, 
Our marsupial, the baby, called a joey, is protected and carried by his mother in a special pouch. Wherever she goes, he goes too. Virginia possums are also marsupials, but there are so many joeys in this family that they soon outgrow their mother's pouch. They cling to her back while she roams about. Hold on tight! The plain zebra colt is born with strong, wobbly legs that soon grow strong. I'm oh, sorry, long, wobbly legs that soon grow strong. Within hours, he can leap and run from predators that stalk his herd. A baby is part of the family. Animal families tend to be large or small. A mother hippopotamus gives birth to a single calf. Soon after birth, the pair joins other females and their babies. Their group is called a school, and together mothers protect the cows from lions and other predators. Red fox kits grow up with several siblings. A mother fox usually has a litter of four to six kits, sometimes more. The father fox brings food back to the den and helps protect them. Only two to four pups join a meerkat family, each, uh, called a mob, each year. Parents, older siblings, cousins, aunts, and uncles all protect and teach them. What kind of family do you have? Do you have one adult that takes care of you? Do you have a lots of adults that take care of you? Do you have siblings that are around you? Cousins or aunts or uncles or grandparents? Let me know in the comments below. The baby needs to be caressed and groomed. These are chimpanzees. Hmm. To grow healthy, newborns need stimulation and attention. Baby cougars cuddle close to their mother. She grooms her cubs tenderly and sleeps curled around them, keeping them safe and warm. Oh, that's so nice. A chimpanzee infant is inseparable from her mother, but other female chimps and their youngsters also form strong bonds with the new baby, touching, holding hands, and playing with the little one. This nurturing will ensure that she becomes a successful member of their community. A newborn elephant calf gets lots of reassurance from her mother, aunts, and grandmothers. The family welcomes the calf by touching her with their trunks, as if to say, are you okay? So a few more minutes. Oh, I don't know. Hold on, let me see how many. One, two, three, four. Okay. Well, even if it runs long, I'm gonna go ahead and finish reading this because later there's there's some otters, and I love otters. They're my favorite mammal. The baby grows strong through play. Youngsters build grown-up skills by jumping, chasing, and roughhousing. A ring-tailed lemur infants are curious and eager to explore. They hop as if their legs were made of springs. Soon, they'll be nimble enough to leap through trees. Stalk, run, quick attack. Lying parents are tolerant of their cubs' games of hunt and chase. The cubs need these skills to survive. Pushing and shoving, mountain goats kids get play king of the rock. This may be fun, but mock battles also prepare young male billies to compete for mates when they become adults. Aha, this is my favorite page. Look at those cute little otters. The baby learns. Young mammals must be taught to find food and be alert for danger, if they are to survive to adulthood. Sure. A mother pika screams an alarm as a hawk flies overhead. Her youngsters learn that hawks are dangerous. They race back to their den. Before he can swim, a sea otter pup watches his mother. She teaches him to swim and dive, to find clams and urchins for food, and to crack open tough shells with a rock. It takes a young orangutan at least 10 years to discover all that he needs to know. As he grows up, his mother shows him where to find food, 
how to do more complicated things like using sticks for tools, and even how to build a sleeping nest of leafy branches from the trees. Kits and Joey's Cubs and Colts, every baby mammal needs gentle care and teaching, just like you. Oh, I loved that book. Now, if you want to know more about these animals, you can look them up individually, but remember the title, Born in the Wild, Baby Mammals and Their Parents. In the back of the book, it has some more information about each of the animals, uh, a couple pages worth, um, and a glossary which explains some of the words that you may not have heard before. So, if you're really interested in this subject, go ahead and tell your parents to go get this book from the library or for where, from wherever so you can read more about those animals, or go ahead and do your own search online. Ooh, does anybody have any questions for me though? You can go ahead and put those in the comments below. Feel free to, oh, I just, just said that. Or you can email me. Um, if you want more content or the opportunity to talk directly with me on a video call, please subscribe to my Patreon account. Um, I originally posted post this on Facebook, but this will also be available on YouTube. So if you don't have Facebook, you can follow me on YouTube. All right, that was an exciting lesson. I'm excited. I love mammals and babies. Okay, so let's take our calming five big deep breaths. Breathe in. And remember, anything that's making you feel upset or stressed or tense, breathe in. Let it go. Number two. Number three. Number four. And number five. Now, if you want to learn more about mammals, join me on Wednesday. That's Science Day, and I'm going to be talking more about mammals, and specifically about a mammal that breaks the rules. So stay tuned. I'm so glad you were all able to join me today. I had so much fun. I can't wait to see everyone next time on Kids Farm Preschool. Bye-bye.